She does a native men. I'm Spiro. And I'm not a wizard. Today, uh, this is going to be a further video to the series on our original iceberg type-in program. So this is part four. This video will be a lot longer, I expect. A lot... Um, I never really plan or script anything anyway, so this is going to be even less than that. Uh, I've just, I kind of had the idea to say, well, let's try and turn this. So we, we started out with a game called Iceberg that was a type in from, a, um, uh, from one of those type in books. We turned it into a little rogue like dungeon crawler where. We now have got to try and get on the yellow at, and I've got to try and get to that door, but I can't because the goblin caught me. To turn this into this, or rather a cross between the two. Um, so You're definitely going to need to be viewing this on a, um, I'll make the text a little bit bigger here. Uh, you're definitely going to need to look at this on a, on a PC. Um, I'm going to be making the changes in the code live. I haven't planned them. I haven't thought ahead of how I'm going to do it. Um, I just got it in my head that wouldn't it be cool to change the board setup to to match this so that there's more so basically so that there are more walls in the way because the game is really quite hard when there are so few walls <coughs> when it's so open the enemy goblin can move in eight directions but you can only move in four so Uh, at this stage, I'm. I've got a, I've got another couple of ideas, and one is the, for example, if we scatter around um, these these bonus pills in the form of some kind of something, you know, in, in the form of something in in our game. <coughs> Excuse me. I hope the audio is okay, actually, because the. I've had to pump up the gain because I I had the perfect audio settings, at least I thought I did, and after I did a system update and a reboot a few days back, um, it's gone much, much, much quieter, so I'm having to boost the gain in OBS in my recording software, and I don't know if that's making it a bit shit. <coughs> Everything I do is a work in progress. I always encounter technical difficulties. That should be expected by now. Okay. So let's try and turn our game into something more along the lines of this. So, you know, we've got more walls in place. There's a little spot where you can exit from one side and reappear on the other and vice versa. Um, and... <coughs> But instead of having the, you know, the the goal of you eat all the dots, the goal will still be to get to the exit. <coughs> this might make the game too easy if we've got too many walls. Um, I might see how we go and maybe we'll add more enemies. Uh, so, I've just made a copy of the original... And I've just called it Roguish Pac-Man. So let's change this to Pac-Man Edition. Uh, so as always, I will leave the code um, on my GitHub repository. So you can you can download it, um, <coughs> play with it, change it. Um, you know, I still, uh, I, 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 I basically put forward a little challenge to see what you can turn this into <coughs> and hopefully this video will show you more of the process of how I go through the code 
to make modifications like the previous ones have mostly well the last one anyway was I made all the changes and then show you showed you what I did um, and this one is going to be more a this is what I'd like to do and you if you can handle hanging around for that long um, will be able to follow through and see my thought process as I try and solve various problems and how I deal with various things as I'm trying to deal with it. So the first thing I did was that in the last version I actually had changed the what I did was I had to split the levels onto two lines because when when I when you do each line in uh, each code line in C64 basic can only be a maximum of 80 characters so when I did data space and then the row of data you'll notice that down here if that's even legible to you we're currently on column 81 this is column kind of column 80 and the next one is column 81 we could get rid of that by putting us getting rid of the space and now we're on column 80 so that should technically work but I did a little bit of a test uh, and again if you've seen all the other videos in the series then you'll know that I run the Vice emulator has a tool called Petcat which converts the plain text to a tokenized C64 basic that you can run directly in the emulator. Um, and what I thought I'd do as a test is turn the data into D shift A. Now another feature of um, C64 basic is that well, a lot of a lot of the basics based on the 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 eight bit basics based on Microsoft Basic at that time ha could have abbreviations. So, like for example, print has an abbreviation of just question mark, but a lot of other commands have got abbreviations of one, two characters, and the. Th you know the next character is a shift so in the case of data d shift a is the abbreviation for data and the way petcat does the conversions anything that you put in lowercase is a standard c64 uppercase character in normal character set i don't know if that's making it confusing but anyway we petcat respects those shifted characters and converts them into the correct um, basic command so d shift a in here will get translated into data for the actual program which is great so i've now got d shift a um, and i can put a space there and we can see we're now at column 79 I could take out that space and we'll be at column 78. So this is going to make it a lot easier to, um, and I'll take out that redundant line. So this is going to make it a lot easier to lay out the levels because we don't need to <coughs> um, split the lines and if we make changes we've got to unsplit the lines and then became a bit tedious and one thing I discovered just today with Visual Studio Code is it doesn't have an insert slash overwrite mode or doesn't have an overwrite mode you know when you press insert on any other text editor on the planet you go into an overwrite mode and I needed to install an extension called overtype to be able to even do that in Visual Studio Code. So that was hilarious. So let's go down here. Now we can press 
insert and we're in overwrite mode yay so first thing I want to do is I want to clear the map that I've set up oops and that is that that now we're still sticking to our grid size of 38 by 16 the <coughs> the kind of I guess the map here if we looked at this <coughs> this is about I think it was like about 23 lines down if I if I did it if I considered that a, you know the Sprite character is one as one line would effectively have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Oops, bollocks, bollocks, twenty one. Okay, twenty one by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So 19 by 21. It's not going to be exact, but, you know, we can use that as kind of inspiration. So we can, let's start somewhere in, or well, let's start on the sides. <coughs> If we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we'll turn that into a zero. We'll turn that into a zero. So then we can say if the player is here and then goes right, they'll appear here. And if they're here and they go left, they'll appear here. Um, so we can set up some walls around it we can set up some walls over here how many was that three on that side three on that side <coughs> um i guess maybe because maybe we don't want to make it too long because uh, you know we want you to be able to sort of come around the sides here and duck in and escape rather than kind of going do 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 and going around the long way um let's add in some yep we'll line that up with that so there's a long corridor down here to escape uh, another wall section here and again we can make these as wide as we want right um oops a daisy one comma and down here we'll go one one so now what we've done is we've effectively made this this so like this bit and that bit um let's do the bottom corners so we've got so you notice that these actually go up and around um, so they take up a bit of space there but because we've got fewer lines we won't do that let's go try and create this bit here so we'll do Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six across, maybe. Uh, 
I've got another little dimple out here that we could put in to make life a little bit more complicated. Have a little. So now you see we can. Oh, actually, see, look at that. That's a good thing to keep an eye on is that we can't actually go there now because we had created a. Because we can't move diagonally, but interestingly, that would have left us if we had been. If the player was here, he couldn't have gone here. Couldn't have gone here, couldn't have gone here, could only have moved here. But if the enemy was here, and you were here, it could go diagonally to catch you. Yeah. I wonder if we leave in little things like that to... That's not for this one. Um, so, we've got that. Uh, we could extend this up a bit. We... We've actually got quite a lot more width, so we might end up doing, maybe repeating some of these little things. Um, we're just making them longer. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and you'll see we've got a massive load of bit in the middle. That's eight, nine, ten. We'll go seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll try and make we'll try and make it as symmetrical as possible. Um what else can we do? So on that guy we went one, two, three, four in. We did a little so one, two, three, four in. We'll have another bit up here. Um We could do a one here, one here. Is that what I did? Oh no, I did it one over. Because on this line we did a little bump in. So you can move up the zeros. Bit of open space here. So we'll make this one too wide. Um, how much overhang do we have? One, two, three, four. Oh, quite a lot. We go two into that one, so we've got to move to there. Alright, so now we've got this massive bit that he can't go into. Um, you know, we could make it... We want to have a whole run right down the bottom. Oh, that'll make life interesting, wouldn't it? What about that? I've kind of lost track of what is... I think that will make us symmetrical with that side. So we'll see how it turns out. Uh, what else have we got? We kind of want something in the middle, right? Um, 
and this might make it interesting, right? So in this game, in Pac-Man, the enemies all start in the centre, but in our game, the enemy starts at a completely random location. So the... I might leave it so that it is still in a random place because, uh, for the purposes of this video, because otherwise the AI is going to try and move closer to the player, but there will have to be an exception for getting out of there first. So, you know, it will have to... Uh, the enemy... If I was to make it, ex I think, exactly like Pac-Man, which has been a couple of decades since I've actually played it, and I'm working off memory, the enemies come out of here, but then they can't go back into there. I think there might be something that causes them to go back into there, but, once they, but this is effectively like a one-way door. So they can go out of it, but they can't go back into it. Um, and and I guess that stops the AI from moving them back in there and getting stuck. You know, the it, it'll be interesting to see how ours turns out. Um, whether we can get the enemies stuck, and I say enemies because of maybe I'll add you know two or three. We'll see how we go with that. Uh, so let's make a. We'll just we'll just block off a bit in the center. Uh, two, four, five, six, and and I can't make it a. I can't make it a box because if I make it hollow internally, then it means that potentially, when we get placed... Ooh, I wonder if that should be the exit that you try to have to get to. Not yet. Anyway. It's always good to have funny ideas. Um, the... Uh, what was I saying? If, if, if it's left hollow, uh, if we do a hollow box, then it means that um, the potentially the player the exit door and the enemies could be placed in there and they wouldn't be able to get out um, so i'm going to if i do a block i'm going to make it so that it is you know all a wall um and we'll see how that goes so let's go Uh, oops. I'll make a we'll kind of make a like a little box thing around it. Oops, I think I forgot to leave something open there. One more there. And we'll turn that into a zero. So we've almost kind of made how this works, where there's like a bit of a border around it. Um, we've actually closed those off. Maybe we'll open them. Another escape route. Um, what else? So we've got that exit. Maybe we'll add a line up here. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should go into selection, column select mode. Column 
copy that. Where are we? We're going to go one, I'll leave a space of two, paste that there. Get rid of that mode. So now we've got So if you get here, you're going to have to go and wind your way down. What else can we do? on the screen for you so we want to try and so we've got one two three four five here which is going to replace these ones I think two three four oh we're not centered oh we're not centered it's not going to be exactly. Ah, oh, that's a bugger. So we've got four here, but we've got five here. We've got a wall, a space, two walls, a space, four walls. Over here we've got a wall, space, two walls, space, five walls, space long column ah I see what I've done this is two out ah whereas that's only one out cool easy to fix it put that down there change that to a zero Oops. Zero, 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 zero. What do we say? We wanted that one to be a zero. Uh, let's go back. Oh, no, let's. So it's going to be a one, 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 one. It's okay. We have the power of editing. Comma zeros, and then we make that five, and now we're back to being symmetrical. So the second one here, we're going to go down to three. Oh, did it again? Four, and then we're going to go here. And do a one, two, three. So that aligns with that. You know what? I think it's actually looking kind of good now. I don't even know if it's. Maybe there should be a different highlight color. I'm going to go here and go back into column select mode. Oh, I'm also in overwrite mode. Oh. Rim. So we'll get rid of those. Back out of column select. My machine is going a bit slow. I have a an old Dunga laptop that is not performing well when I record videos. Okay, so at the moment 
all I've changed is the map. So let's see how that turns out. Uh, what have we got here? Pet cat. Not that one. That one. But we want roguish Pac-Man. And we'll want to call that roguish Pac-Man.prg. So we're converting our text into uh, a PRG file uh, x64sc we'll now run it now run the PRG file Let's see how we go I'm going to put it into warp mode so it loads quicker W alt W warp mode warp Warp mode. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, look at that. <gasps> look at that. <laughs> How cool is that? Wow. Now we know that the enemy AI moves diagonally, is going to try and move closer to us regardless, but it can't move through walls. So if I go down here, that should put him into the corner. Um, you see, so he is moving. But he's not. Right, so here we go. So now he's going to think, and he's going to be like, ah, I'm close. And now I'm like one square away from him. Oops. Oh. And now I can go down. And I win again. So that, right, we've got a cool looking map now. And that almost works. What do we got? What now do we want to change? What now do we want to change? Should we do another enemy first? Uh, Pac-Man has only got four ghosts. Do other ones come out later on, like special ones? I'm not entirely sure. Well, let's let's account for the fact that we're going to. Uh, so this is the enemy character. That shows that that gets displayed. So, um, Petsky, character thirty eight is the ampersand. Now, you know what? First off, let's make let's do the because it'll be a little bit easier when we get to. here and we go left or west we want to appear here and vice versa so this is going to be we know we, we can we know what the grid coordinate will be so the it'll be grid uh, x is going to be one and uh, me one or is it going to be zero find out be one or zero and y coordinate will be one two three four five six seven eight so we're talking about i'm going to write this down because i've got the memory of a forgetful thing oh actually we can do it as rem statements down here rem east exit equals uh well it'll be board uh, what do we say? One comma eight 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or zero, comma, seven. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to go and double check to see where we're assigning the uh, board positions. So for y equals one to b. Okay, so it's one to eight rather than zero. So um, arrays are zero based. So we're basically not putting anything into the zero thingy of the arrays. So okay, we are. 1,8. Um, we will now want to go to the bit that updates our coordinates, right? So let us get rid of this whole... Um, this was leftovers from the iceberg, because the original iceberg game um, had the players type north, south, east and west to go and and we don't want that so we'll just get rid of that so now you can only move with the cursor keys um, the arrow keys um, so that we've got we might also want to give ourselves a little bit more room here to add some more logic. So at the moment the line numbering is pretty tight. So I'll leave 100 here, but I think what I might do is I might want to shift everything else down. Um, let's see, so we didn't even need to number these data statements, so that's fine. We only need to put numbers on lines that we're going to refer to in our go-tos or go-subs. So let move... Well, let's just make it easy. 1800 for the 800s. Go to 1800. Where else do we have 800s defined? No more highlighted. Is that the only one you got caught? Go to 800. Oh, because there's only two end conditions. That's fine. And let's make these end games at 1500. So we want to change that to 1500. that to 1520, that to 1500. Did we have one more? When the player hits, it goes that. When the enemy hits, we got that. Okay, so I think, I'll just do a quick highlight on that. We've caught all the go-tos and go-subs on that. That's fine. So, now let's move, well actually we can do the same for these as well, right? Move these down to 1200s. 1200, 1200. Because these are not going to change what we want is to have more space in the middle for the game logic. So anything referring to 250... You know what, maybe I should have I was going to hit Control Z a couple of times. Alright, and I'm going to highlight that. A nice feature of VS Code is I don't think I'm using those well, actually let's so you can, you can double click on something and it'll highlight in here every occurrence of it. So we've got there's no more this basically is what your screen is viewing. So I've got a couple of go subs. Get that one, got that one, got that one, got that line number, got that, got that. And there's no other code which has got 250 or 
any lines which have got 250 in them anywhere. So let, oops, change all occurrences to 1250. Do the same for 200. We've got a 200 up here, that's cool. We've got a 200 there. Oh, that's really it. Place the player on the board, so let's change all those occurrences to 1200. Let's do a 210. use 210 for anything else okay let's make that 1210 let's do 1220 220 220 looks safe it change all occurrences 12 oops 12 oops 20 escape well, 50, we did, 260, there's a few of those, there's one here, and there's a few down here, so we'll change that to 1260, and that should have moved us down a bit, none of these others are going to give us too much of a problem we've got to go to 100 here which is fine that's the top of the loop and we've got the 180 so I think that this one I'd like to move as well um, but I might move that down to like 500 or something like that we got ah we got 1800 so I don't want to change all occurrences I'm going to have to do that one manually. But it looks like it's just these ones here. So let's go to change that to 500. Oops. 500. 500. 500. So that should give us, effectively, uh, because of the way PetCat works, is that it will auto-allocate line numbers um, in increments of two so this will be at 100 that'll be 102 that'll be 104 that'll be 106 so that effectively gives us uh, butt weasels I keep pressing the right mouse button um, so that gives us 100 through to 500 is 400 lines divided by two so that should give us 200 lines of code we can always change that we've only got you know a couple of occurrences to change let us check to see if it still works because we don't want to get too carried away and realize we've broken something else so all we've changed this time around has been those line numbers what mode this works a lot faster when it's compiled, I have to confess. <coughs> Where are we? Ooh. 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 Ah, see, syntax error in 114. What the? List 114. What? I didn't even touch that. How did that? Wow, that's interesting. So that means, what is that? YY equals YY minus. You know what I did do? I took out those um, parentheses. Ah, I took out those parentheses. Yeah, so those are necessary. Oh, 
Or did I miss one? Oh, I missed one. I took out the one at the beginning. See, this is why it, it pays to do a bit of bug checking. So that... Looks like we got the right number. We've got an open parenthesis that matches that one. That one matches that one. That one matches that one. Okay, so I think I took that out and took out one too many. Fine and dandy. <clears throat> How long have we been working on this? Oh, 45 minutes. I hope you're still awake. I've ran out of coffee. Alt mode. This works a lot better when compiled. I should. Um... Okay, now we're going to move. Cool. See, he's still trying to. The AI is actually still pretty dumb, right? This, he's just trying to get closer. And the first, the first thing that the, that the enemy AI does is it tries to move it both on the X and the Y axis. And if it can't because there's a wall, it'll try and move it on the Y axis. But I think it actually only moves it north. So, uh, plus, oh, it's, still, it's still relative to the direction of the player. So, it's still pretty dumb oh no we're at an impasse because <laughs> he can move diagonally but I can't so that means that I've got to go down and across but if I go down he is going to be on that uh, on the exit door actually I wonder if he will be I wonder if it's because the door is yeah see I think it only checks to see if he's not on a wall so he will be able to move over the exit door. Ta da And the exit door's gone. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, bollocks. Can't win. Can't win. Awesome. There we go. See, this is what happens when you... These sort of... Bugs would be identified by a testing team. We ain't got that. We ain't got time for that. So that's pretty hilarious. That's fine. I'm going to leave that in because that's funny. Um, what did we say we were going to do next? We move the code. We changed our map. Let's add a second enemy. Okay, we've got a... <clears throat> so the interesting thing is, is that we've got the enemy... We can only have variable names with two characters. So I can't go enemy 1x and enemy 2 X and enemy 1Y and enemy 2Y <coughs> I'd probably have to make an array or I have to either either do a, an E let's say E1 for enemy 1 and then uh, X and Y um, that's going to be do you reckon we can do that? do you reckon we can pull that off? let's try and add a second enemy and use an array but I'll leave in the current enemy uh, so we've got the board 
we want to add, let's go, but we don't really want to dimension an array because we can only have two I mean, enemy one will have one comma one. That, because it's only going to store the X and it's only going to store its Y. We could make it so that it can store its current X and Y and its previous X and Y by making those two. Um, let's try doing it one at the moment. I'll dimension it just in case. Uh, well, the other option is to do enemy, and then we might go, you know, f if we were doing Pac Man, four enemies, and each one of them has an X and a Y coordinate, that would be another way of doing it. Four, well, five enemies, four, four enemies, yep, should we try that? We're learning. Um, so we've now got the enemy, arium, enemy array, uh, Enemy number x comma y. The should we do e or should we do e in? I don't think e is a reserved from the mathematical exponential operator. I don't know. Um, let us. We'll try that. That's fine. That's fine. We're here to break things. If this takes too long, I'll stop the video and make a part four point two or something. Um, so what we've got is we've got the enemy start location. So we might want to add. Uh, Sx and Sy, oh yeah, let's go, maybe we'll have to do one for each enemy, so at the moment our code is going to be, oh we can shorten the number of lines we need, right, by doing this, so we're going to have 50, 52, 54, uh, this will be 55, Rim in a, a we might have to shuffle these around as well, or do a go sub and make these figure these out. Add a yeah, um, put the code into a later address. Enemy zero. Uh, let's reuse that uh, you know what see this is where I'm going to start getting into problems of where I'm not assigning the the uh, what do we call so I'm not assigning I'm working out the coordinates, but I'm not allocating it to a board position. I'm just saying if the board position there isn't empty, um, but that isn't empty is only actually accounting for a wall, because that's all we've put into our board at the moment. The escape doors and the enemy locations and the player locations, we're not, we're not putting in until later after the board is drawn 
We could still do that, um, but I'll need to update the um, the. Oh, actually, that'll be quite easy to do. I, I could. So, so what I wanted was the board to be drawn first, and then everything else to be placed later after the board was drawn. So, um, what the way it was dealt with was if the board coordinate has a zero um, according to this then it will get a uh, a blue dot printed on that space if the board position has got a wall and maybe I need to I think I might at some point refactor the code so that it is not allocating but it is treating the ones as a wall automatically yeah we're, do we're doing a bit of extra work here that we probably don't need to um, and uh, the collision detection is relying on you know, do you do you hit a wall? Uh, we could also change all that. So if it's because we only need to print out a hash on the screen, we don't need to. Uh, hmm. I was going to say to try and to try and save us going through this loop, but we still have to do it anyway because we have to read the data in. Um, and you know whether we allocate that position a zero or a thirty-five doesn't isn't going to make a difference for that speed. So okay. That's fine. That's again. This is me working through the 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 you know how how I work through these problems um, and try and figure out how I'm going to solve them or even whether they need to be solved. So what we can do in here is we can I'm going to change it so that we are now we will set the these things on the board as we're generating them. Because that's going to become more important now with the more things we add or the more enemies we add. But we're not going to display them until after the board is drawn. And we can do that with these. So my idea is to, instead of saying, does the board equal zero, print a dot, or does the board equal a wall, print a wall, I'm going to say... Uh, if the we'll do the wall first uh, no I was, I was going to say do a if I say if it's not equal to zero then oh no yeah that's right I, I'll do that if, if it's but I can't do an else this doesn't have an else <laughs> crumbs so I might have to do a go to to skip the the next um, if so we've got here we've got so we can predetermine what our line numbers are going to be we've got 70 72 uh, 74 76 78. So if we make our logic on line 78 and then we go line 80, um, if it is, no, I want to have this up here. But change that to if it's not 
oops, if it's not zero, then print a hash. Um, and then go to 80. Do we still have that? 2, 4, 6, 8. No, we want to make that 82. Let's make it 85, 84, just for make it a bit cleaner. Otherwise, we'll print a blue dot. How about that? And we probably want to put that on there. So what we're doing is we've got 72, 74, 76, 78, 80, 84, 86, 88, 90, 92, 4, 6, 8, 100. Ooh, we've got exactly... I think I'm going to push this down as well. Because we're going to need to add some more things over here for placing other enemies and so on. Uh, we, I mean, we could do some of these on multiple. Oh, yeah, we could do a, you know, save some lines by doing this. There we go. We're giving ourselves another two lines. Um, but I might. We've already pushed this down to 500. Uh, what do we reckon? Um, I'm paranoid. I'm going to change that to 200. Change that to 200. We've got to go to 100 over here, so 200. That has shrunk that, so let's add... I hope that was right. I hope I was paying attention. We are going to need to add more here. So maybe I'll make the board printout at line 100, uh, 150, change that to 150, because there's a bit more room. think it's probably a good time to do another oh now I, I you'll notice I'm not saving I've set um, Visual Studio Code to save automatically so every key press I type is saved um, What mode? What mode? Come on, baby, you can do it. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, so is it still working? Yep. Ooh. The other thing about it being compiled is that the it's a bit more responsive. So he's stuck there, right? We we really want to, at some point, try and either have a account to say, how many times has he failed to move? Um, you know, if that's one or two times, then maybe get him to try a different direction. Like instead of going up towards you, going down, and then 
that might put him in a different position to go, oh, actually, what if I now, you know, on the next move, if he is here, he'll suddenly be able to go, oh, I'll be able to move here. So now I'm closer. And then the next move, he'll be, you know, so it'll, you'll find that he will act a little smarter. Cool. All right. Okay, so far, so good. We did generate an enemy, so what we're going to do, all right, so now let us, we'll go to the point of allocating these to the board, so um, board, air, So this is the door, so dx, comma, dy, oops, equals, the door, so we want to put the door character at that location, um, board, sx, comma, sy, equals oops the enemy character cool so we've allocated that so that means that by now allocating them um when when by allocating the escape door um oh yeah we can do what i did in the other line which is you know put put a couple of these on the same line so that we've got a bit more room. See how I did that. Set the this gives us a bit more room to play. Okay, so the enemy start location it figures out it figures out random x and y locations. And then down here it says is the board at that generated x and y location not zero. In other words is there something already there? And that something will be either a wall or at this point an escape door. So if there's something there, try again. If there's nothing there, allocate it. So then when we get to enemy or E0, it'll do the same thing, right? It'll try and say, okay, well here's your um Um, your your randomly generated X and Y location is there something already there and that at this point it will now account for the walls the escape door and the first enemy um, and if it's happy with that I'm not sure what's going to happen if I allocate Ah, so I probably need to allocate not just the board in this case, but because I'm using the E array, I probably want to also set uh, enemy zero, comma sx, comma sy. So now I've set that. The board position is, has got a character on it, so that's taken, and I've set his starting X and Y. Hopefully that'll be... we'll figure that out. Um, so now we want the board, uh, your X and your Y, to equal the player character. Okay, so now we've got two enemies, one in an array, and a player, and an escape door. Now I don't have the logic yet for moving that second enemy. Um, all right, let's do that. So, but I and I also am not printing him on the screen, if you'll notice. He's on the board, but I'm not printing him on the screen. And I did that using these little loops here. So, 
how will I do that for the other enemy? Well, we can... We don't need to change that because we want them both to be green uh, ampersands. So the enemy is an ampersand. But we want to change this before jumping to that board update routine. So we'll have to go ZY equals... Mm. Oh, how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? I want the ZY to be the value of that middle... Oh, I might have struck an issue here. Because I want it to be... We've got E0, X, comma, Y. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to extract that. I'm not sure I can do that. I'm going to take a pause, and then I'm going to make some coffee, and I'm going to go for a wee break, and I'm going to... Do a bit of googling. So after reassessing life, the universe and everything over a cheese sandwich and some coffee, uh, I think I've got a new idea. Room for my coffee mug. So I think the array was the wrong thing to do. I think what I want to do is have in, in, in kind of the same way that the current enemy was um, because the game came from a, a ship avoiding icebergs the enemy was S I guess for ship X and there was an SY I think what I want to do is have X and Y variables for each of the enemies that I'm going to add. Now, because C64 basic variables can only be two characters, the first character can't be a digit. I'm thinking about having X1 and Y1 for enemy 1, X2 and Y2 for enemy 2. Uh... And I think that that is probably going to solve the problem. So I'm going to delete that. Hope for the best. Uh, let's go enemy I'll leave the SX at the moment because I can always rename them. And because this will be enemy 2 I'll call these X2 uh, and Y2. Okay, so X2 is a random number between 1 and the board X width uh, plus 1, because that's a number from 0 to 1, and Y2 the same, but for the Y axis. So let's go uh, X2 y2 so if, if the board location we don't need to do so if the board location of x2 and y2 is not empty then we're going to set those coordinates to the enemy character um, so it's basically the same as what we did here so I was even thinking about, you know, these random number generations. Maybe I should have made them a um, a little routine to say, you know, I've... Because these are all basically the same, right? The... Uh, well, let's do that now then. Because 
we're awesome let's go to line 90 as the rim coordinate generator uh, and we'll use we we'll use the zx and the zy but they get they get regenerated so let's go zx it's not zx spectrum let's copy one of these lines over and so we want our zx and our zy um, we do want to do the check here bomb sticks what did I just do okay let's move that down so we want the this to be zx and zy if not go to 90 and then we'll do a return so we're generating we'll jump to this subroutine oh that means that after this I'm gonna have to also jump to line 100 let's move this down 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 outside of that into our um, We'll say over here will be our um, our our function section. Okay, so we'll copy that there. <coughs> Let's start at a thousand. So 1000 is our coordinate generator. So now let's go back up to here. Uh, and now we don't even need these line numbers. So what we want to do is we want to say, will we use the DX and the DY? I think we I think we are. I think we're gonna have to, I think we're gonna have to go sub. 1000 um, <coughs> we'll go DX equals ZX oops uh, DY equals ZY we don't need those Put these all on the same line so we generate a random location we assign it to our dx and dy and we're good to go i think that should be well could go wrong let's just we'll do a well let's go rem uh, plot door uh, we'll go rem plot enemy one don't need those I want to change that to a go sub 1000 we want to well, seeing as we're changing, let's 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 do the whole thing. We'll go x1 equals zx, uh, x2 equals zy, and we will. I just did x1 and x2, didn't I? I want to go y1, x1, and that should be. Am I doing Y1? Okay. Did I do that one right? DX is ZX. DY is ZY. Cool. X1 is ZX. Y1 
the ZY. Okay, so that's enemy one. Rem plot enemy two. We'll copy that. Ah. Replace that. Oh, no, I did do it. Yep, so the allocation to the grid is there. So this is going to be x2, y2, x2, y2. Yep, so we've got a, two enemies. Rem. Oh, let's leave that. Okay, so. those and I think that means what did I have as the player X and player Y was it why it was Y Y wasn't it Y Y Y X <coughs> and Y Y Y X and Y Y I want to change that. Player X and player Y. How much do we have to change? A lot. Y, 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 Y. It's unlikely that Y, Y will be used for anything else, even in a string of text. So let's change to make a little bit more sense change all of those to py because we like pi and we want to change the yx to px I'm fairly confident I haven't completely broken the game. But it also means that every SX we want to change to uh, X1, that's enemy 1, SY, we want to change to Y1. Have we broken the game? Okay, so let me just double check that we've got everything else all right. We've got our, we plot our door, we plot, well let's change that to enemy one start location, enemy two start location. Player start location. Enemy one, enemy two, and what we haven't done is we have not added the logic for enemy two. So at the moment, enemy two will stay put, but we also haven't drawn them on the screen. So we've got, after we print out the board, we've got this little bit here, so we want to label that as rem um, place objects on board um, we got a 1200 12 10 12 20 we're going to need to push that out a little bit I think again this is probably stuff that I can reuse as well right because this is all <coughs> well, actually I am doing a go sub <clears throat> um, let's go 1230 uh, let's copy let's copy this and make that 1230 
place enemy two on board. So that'll be. I don't know why I did this. I, I did my X's and my Y's around the wrong way. So X two, Z X is X two, Z Y equals Y two, Z Y equals enemy. What did I do there? Ah, that was me. I don't need to do that. Z Y. Let's get rid of that. That was when I was going to be using the. So we've already put it in place, and the door we've already put in place. So now we can get rid of that line as well. Because we've now plotted the door. B D X D Y equals D R. That should be the exact same code as there. Yes, it is. Uh, we don't need to do that anymore. So when we place the stuff on the board after we've uh, laid out the board map, <coughs> the player enemy, enemy one, door enemy two, <coughs> will be placed on the board, excuse me, more coffee. <coughs> Let's go through it just quickly. Um, we got rid of that array. We set up the board. Plot the door. Let's have 1000. Let's double check. Generates a random X and Y. If that X and Y coordinate is not zero, so it has something already allocated to it, try again. Otherwise return. And when it returns, it will have populated ZX and X and ZY. So we'll allocate them. Again, I'm not sure if I'm even going to need these variables. If I should just say uh, mm, cuz the door isn't going to move. Oh, that's an interesting one. The door isn't going to move. So I don't need to keep track of its x and y location. So we'll just do that. Enemies and players do, so they're going to be getting updated. So I do want to keep track of those x and y coordinates. Print out the board. Um, print the quote at the bottom of all the instructions. Place the objects on the board. Oh, that's what I hadn't done. I hadn't added go sub 1230. Yep. Yep, so now it'll place all the objects. Uh, we get into the main loop, we check for the key. We assume the player is going to move. ZX, ZY. Man, I did it again, didn't I? Change my X and Y's around. Oops, it's put it after that. So we've got ZX equals PX and ZY equals PY. Oops, let me cut that. Put that at the beginning. So now we've got XY, XY. It seems to make a little clear. I think it just came from when, when the code was in the book originally they had done yx for some reason and you can even see it here with the updating the player coordinates as yx does the y first and then does the y uh, the x 
So this here, if we bump into the enemy that doesn't move, because we're checking for the character on the board rather than the X and Y locations of a particular enemy, then it doesn't matter what enemy we hit, that'll trigger. The Yep, so we've now got, we might want to do is, I, I guess the trouble is, is that we're going to have to do this for each of the enemies. How much room do we have? 200 to 600, we've got plenty of room. Um, go sub 1200, 1210, 1220 was the door. I'll add the ghost sub for 1230, which is enemy 2. Um, is that right? 1200, 1210, 1230. 1200 is the player. 1210, enemy 1. 1230 is enemy 2. I might even shuffle those around to make it so that the, the door is at 1200 player is at 12.10 and then the enemies will be oh, we can do that now, it doesn't even really matter does it for the purposes of the redrawing it doesn't matter when they happen so that'll be 1200 player will be 12.10 enemy 1 will be 12.20 enemy 3 will be 12.30 so 12... 10, 12, 20, 12, 30. So we're not updating the door in this case. But over here, where are we? We do a bunch of go subs on one line. We do place the door, the player, and then the enemies. Um, and it means that I can go, I'll probably shift the update board down a little bit as well. 12, 50, maybe I'll do that now. Should we change that to 1300? How many enemies are we going to have? We're not going to have that many, right? Um, but I do want to add, as I said, the, the magic dot. Uh, and my idea for the magic dot was to slow down the enemies or pause them for a couple of turns to give you like a couple of extra moves. Um three so one two three four five six let's make it 1400 change that to 1400 uh, change 1260 to uh, We've got two, four, six, eight, ten. Well, let's make it fourteen, twenty. That'll give us again more room to add things if we need to. Um, court fifteen hundred. So let's go add a rem end game. Uh, scenarios we got our in game scenarios we've got our function section we've got our main loop over here we're less than 80 characters so it's fine it'll still run now I think that should get us going. And as I said, the second enemy is not currently moving, but I do want to make sure that I haven't completely broken everything else. <coughs> We've added a lot. Go, go, go. 
go into warp mode to generate the map or the board. All right, board. Oh no, look at that. Ah. Oh. I've done something wrong. If you notice when it was printing out the board, there were three ampersands placed at those locations. That might well be the exit, but for some reason, the door is... Ah, I did want to keep that DX and DY. Let's put them as zero. <laughs> there we go. Okay. But that should still be the door. Damn it, that's the guy that's moving. So we've got this guy is moving, this guy is not. So let's move into the guy that isn't moving. And he should give us a bad day. Whoa. Yep, I've been caught by a goblin. So it knows that it's there, it's just... Ah, that's interesting. My Ah, right, because I didn't change my in-game code... It's still using X1. So it has assumed that. Uh, so, I, so, the, so the code changes the color of the character of, you know, of where you died or where you won the game. And that's an interesting point. He, he walked over the exit, so he ate the exit again. I, I, I think I'm going to call this video here because I it's one and a half hours long. Um, but so this this gives us something to work on next time right so the th things we have to work on is put that back in the right place um, figure out the logic to move the second enemy figure out the uh, do the update so that it tracks which enemy got you not just the goblin and fix up the uh, eating of the of the exit or the door so we could either do that for example by not allowing the goblins to move onto the door um, or allowing them to move over the door so I think that that I'm it'll be easier at this point to just not allow them to go onto the door and that'll be um, you know, it'll be easier to just, you know, you know where we check for, do they hit a wall? Okay, they can't go there. Um, you know, do they do... Um, do, do, do they walk on any other kind of floor tile or object? Uh, because there will be... Uh, oh, actually, because if I add those little things there the 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 happy pills then we're going to want the enemies to walk over them but not affect them right that would be hilarious though if the enemies walked over the poison pill and paused you for a couple of turns that'd be funny so we've got some things to work on um yeah, I hope this was I hope this was useful. Right, I don't, I don't know if you're able to sit through an hour and a half of me rambling, and you know, like working through the code. But my hope is that with this kind of video, is that I'm not just showing you <clears throat> the code and how it works. But I'm also showing you how I work through the problems and how I try and figure out the solutions. Um, and, you know, I am completely new to this. I've never written a game before in my life. Um, the, at least I don't, mm, that might not be, I've never, mm, that might not be entirely true. I have tried to write some games before. Um but I'm not a game developer. I'm, you know, I haven't, I haven't really studied in depth 
in fact, I'm not even really a programmer, right? I, 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 I say to people I can code, but I'm not a coder. But people who 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 make coding their um, either their career choice or their primary hobby choice, you know, they 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 they, they, they approach programming through a different mindset, right? They you you learn the you know i get i'm not sure how to i'm not sure even how to word it but it's to to me it feels like they they kind of have a, a better grasp on the the logic and how it should be applied in code as opposed to someone like me who kind of <clears throat> i know what i want to try and achieve and then I have to try and translate that into how I understand um, the logic to work. And I'm sometimes wrong, as you saw with me trying to do the enemy with an array. <coughs> I think I was completely off the mark on that one. Um, but thankfully I identified it before I had written, you know, vast screens of code. Um, but yeah, I'll leave that. Thanks for watching. If you've lasted this long, please leave a double thumbs up in the comments. Um, just so I know that you're doubly awesome. And yeah, there'll be another one. Um, I will, uh, you know, as I say, please leave your, your thoughts and your comments down below. Um, I've had some really good feedback, not just in the comments not just on um not just on social media but i've had emails as well people that are that are working on it or playing with it or doing similar things you know and it's and it's good to get uh to you know to kind of bounce ideas off each other as well you know um you know you might be working on a project that is similar but not quite the same you might learn something from this that you can adapt um, you might be doing something similar, and if you let me know, then I might be able to learn from it and adapt. Um, and, yeah, oh boy, let's have fun. I'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.